Liberator Brain. Part 3. What Neurosagness? Here the author invites us to take the path of neurosages, starting by asking the following questions, who serves whom? Who compels whom? Who dies for whom? He quotes Isaac Asimov who reminded us that a civilization that produces a lot of knowledge and little wisdom is threatened with self-destruction. Rabelais had already told us before science without conscience is but the ruin of the soul. The human being is greater than all his creations, school, hospital. In this chapter, he begins by presenting his own background. His university studies are impressive, University of Paris Saclay, a cold normal super, which he describes as hell, Cambridge University, Paradise, and Stanford. His first PhD was on the geopolitics of knowledge, his second on the Sufi presence in Western literature, and the third in preparation on the contribution of neuroergonomics and biomimicry to the knowledge economy. It was after a nervous breakdown that he became interested in neuroergonomics. For him, it is an invitation to observe his own mental life, his own subjectivity, in order to prevent it from taking control. Here he quotes Pauli, everything that is good for you and good for nature is expensive, everything that is bad for you and for nature is cheap, who designed the system? Our nerves are not meant to be rushed. Neuroergonomics serves to make us aware that certain mental practices can damage the functioning of our brain. My brain is sacred, my nerves are sacred, it is not my nerves plus that serve your system but your system that serves my nerves. We have a hard time appreciating what we can get for nothing, air, brain, by confusing price and value, worth and scarcity. Just like our muscles, the brain can wither or herniate. Our brain hates to perform a task without knowing the reason for it. Evolution has created it not to lend itself to this kind of exercise and to go through various mental states. When you share a material good, you divide it, when you share an immaterial good, you multiply it. Quote from Maidri Sabrakane, author of Free Your Brain. To conclude, the author advises us to do seven gymnotics, gymnastics of the mind, exercises to keep our brains free and in good shape. 1. Practice clear subjectivity. This is observing your mind in Buddhist terms or observing your mental life in neuroscientific terms. In concrete terms, it means observing the biases, limits automatisms and conditioned reactions of our mind. We are then better able to recognize its subjectivity and the illusion that we can give ourselves of being objective. For the author, it is a matter of mental hygiene to protect ourselves from internal and external nervous pollution. If body hygiene seems obvious to us because we have become conscious of our body, we are not conscious of our mind. Well, to train oneself to high consciousness of one's mental life, to make it a second nature, is to practice limpid subjectivity. I feel like recalling here the quotation from Montaigne quoted in the preface, True science is an ignorance that is known. 2. Know how to uninstall an application. Here the author invites us to sort out our applications that may have been installed from birth. As for the phones, it is important to know how to uninstall the energy-consuming applications to avoid rowing. If you practice limpid subjectivity, you will identify the useless, dangerous and castrating poorisils that have settled in your mind without your knowledge. He reassures us that even if we feel like we are losing part of our identity by uninstalling a Rottweiler, nothing could be further from the truth. Taking back control of your mental life is always a liberation. 3. Move from learn helplessness to learn power. You are much more powerful than your education makes you believe, I abracane. He considers learn helplessness, I don't deserve it, I can do it, to be the most dangerous and widespread curse in humanity. We are imprisoned by mental chains that prevent us from reaching our full potential. 4. Be a liberated neophile. After practicing the learned power that comes from uninstalling the porous eels and limpid subjectivity, one may ask. When was the last time I did something for the first time? Indeed, as we move from powerlessness to power, we will give ourselves more permission to do new activities, to embark on new challenges, and to become neophiles, enthusiasts of the new. 5. 
practice exploration or the art of mental flexibility. The more you practice neophilia, the more you expand your mental life. The author compares it to stretching a muscle, more flexible, more adaptable and therefore capable of more varied postures. Hence the importance of balancing exploitation, normative, carrot and stick sensitive, with exploration, creative, open, imaginative, non-compliant. The American scientist Alexander Wisner Gross defined intelligence as the ability to reserve a maximum of freedom of action, a maximum of open options. Free systems are the basis for building intelligent systems. And intelligence is freedom. We believe that this article on improved memory will benefit you since it deals with a similar subject. Here is an article on this subject where you will find more information. 6. Practice the places method. To memorize information, there is nothing better than to spatialize your thoughts. The palette of your mental life begins with space but it continues with emotional memory and association memory. Burton says make your thought an empire. This tool reinforces the practice of clear subjectivity and learn power. 7. Ignore your peers. Peers put us on their level, mentally, intellectually, spiritually. In order to be free, it is necessary to detach oneself from the opinions of others. If intelligence is freedom, then intelligence is the ability to think for oneself, without worrying about what others think. Burton recommended, do what your humanity tells you. Don't expect applause from anyone but yourself. He lives noblest and dries noblest who follows the rules he has created for himself. Any other life is a dead living death. And to remember this gym more easily, this gives sane loop, subjectivity, application, impotence, neophilia. Exploration, place, peers. There is no excellence without love.